Chapters 26 through 29 of Irenaeus Against Heresies, Book 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Irenaeus Against Heresies, Book 1. Translated by Alexander Roberts and William H. Rambeau. Chapter 26. Doctrines of Cerinthus, the Ebionites, and Nicolaitanus. 1. Cerinthus again, a man who was educated in the wisdom of the Egyptians, taught that the world was not made by the primary god, but by a certain power far separated from him, and at a distance from that principality who is supreme over the universe, and ignorant of him who is above all. He represented Jesus as having not been born of a virgin, but as being the son of Joseph and Mary according to the ordinary course of human generation, while he nevertheless was more righteous, prudent, and wise than other men. Moreover, after his baptism, Christ descended upon him in the form of a dove from the supreme ruler, and that then he proclaimed the unknown father and performed miracles. But at last, Christ departed from Jesus, and that then Jesus suffered and rose again, while Christ remained impassable, inasmuch as he was a spiritual being. 2. Those who are called Ebionites agree that the world was made by God, but their opinions with respect to the Lord are similar to those of Cerinthus and Carpocratus. They use the gospel according to Matthew only and repudiate the apostle paul maintaining that he was an apostate from the law as to the prophetical writings they endeavor to expound them in a somewhat singular manner they practice circumcision persevere in the obedience of those customs which are enjoined by the law and are so judaic in their style of life that they even adore jerusalem as if it were the house of god three the Nicolaitanes are the followers of that Nicholas, who was one of the seven first ordained to the diaconate by the apostles. They lead lives of unrestrained indulgence. The character of these men is very plainly pointed out in the Apocalypse of John, when they are represented as teaching that it is a manner of indifference to practice adultery, and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Wherefore, the word has also spoken of them thus. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitanes, which I also hate. Chapter 27. Doctrines of Cerdo and Marcion. 1. Cerdo was one who took his system from the followers of Simon, and came to live at Rome in the time of Hyginus who held the ninth place in the episcopal succession from the apostles downwards. He taught that the God proclaimed by the law and the prophets was not the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the former was known, but the latter unknown, while the one also was righteous, but the other benevolent. 2. Marcion of Pontus succeeded him, and developed his doctrine. In so doing, he advanced the most daring blasphemy against him who is proclaimed as God by the law and the prophets, declaring him to be the author of evils, to take delight in war, to be infirm of purpose, and even to be contrary to himself. But Jesus, being derived from that Father who is above the God that made the world, and coming into Judea in the times of Pontius Pilate the governor, who was the procurator of Tiberius Caesar, was manifested in the form of a man to those who were in Judea, abolishing the prophets and the law, and all the works of that God who made the world, whom also he calls Cosmocrator. Besides this, he mutilates the gospel which is according to Luke, removing all that is written respecting the generation of the Lord, and setting aside a great deal of the teaching of the Lord, in which the Lord is recorded as most dearly confessing that the Maker of the universe is his Father. He likewise persuaded his disciples that he himself was more worthy of credit than are those apostles who have handed down the gospel to us, furnishing them not with the gospel, but merely a fragment of it. 
in like manner too he dismembered the epistles of paul removing all that is said by the apostle respecting that god who made the world to the effect that he is the father of our lord jesus christ and also those passages from the prophetical writings which the apostle quotes in order to teach us that they announced beforehand the coming of the lord three salvation will be the attainment only of those souls which had learned his doctrine while the body as having been taken from the earth is incapable of sharing in salvation in addition to his blasphemy against god himself he advanced this also truly speaking as with the mouth of the devil and saying all things in direct opposition to the truth that cain and those like him and the sodomites and the egyptians and others like them and in fine all the nations who walked in all sorts of abomination were saved by the lord on his descending into hades and on their running unto him and that they welcomed him into their kingdom but the serpent which was in marcion declared that abel and enoch and noah and those other righteous men who sprang from the patriarch abraham with all the prophets and those who were pleasing to god did not partake in salvation for since these men he says knew that their god was constantly tempting them so now they suspected that he was tempting them and did not run to jesus or believe his announcement and for this reason he declared that their souls remained in hades four but since this man is the only one who has dared openly to mutilate the scriptures and unblushingly above all others to inveigh against god i propose specially to refute him convicting him out of his own writings and with the help of god i shall overthrow him out of those discourses of the lord and the apostles which are of authority with him and of which he makes use at present however i have simply been led to mention him that thou mightest know that all those who in any way corrupt the truth and injuriously affect the preaching of the church are the disciples and successors of simon magus of samaria although they do not confess the name of their master in order all the more to seduce others yet they do teach his doctrines they set forth indeed the name of christ jesus as a sort of lure but in various ways they introduce the impieties of simon and thus they destroy multitudes wickedly disseminating their own doctrines by the use of a good name and through means of its sweetness and beauty extending to their hearers the bitter and malignant poison of the serpent the great author of apostasy chapter twenty eight doctrines of tatian the encratites and others one many offshoots of numerous heresies have already been formed from those heretics we have described this arises from the fact that numbers of them indeed we may say all desire themselves to be teachers and to break off from the particular heresy in which they have been involved forming one set of doctrines out of a totally different system of opinions and then again others from others they insist upon teaching something new declaring themselves the inventors of any sort of opinion which they may have been able to call into existence to give an example springing from saturninus and marcion those who are called encratites or self-controlled preached against marriage thus setting aside the original creation of god and indirectly blaming him who made the male and female for the propagation of the human race some of those reckoned among them have also introduced abstinence from animal food thus proving themselves ungrateful to god who formed all things they deny too the salvation of him who was first created it is but lately however that this opinion has been invented among them a certain man named tatian first introduced the blasphemy he was a hearer of justin's and as long as he continued with him he expressed no such views but after his martyrdom he separated from the church 
and excited and puffed up by the thought of being a teacher, as if he were superior to others, he composed his own peculiar type of doctrine. He invented a system of certain invisible ions, like the followers of Valentinus, while, like Marcion and Saturninus, he declared that marriage was nothing else than corruption and fornication. In his denial of Adam's salvation was an opinion due entirely to himself. 2. Others again, following upon Basilides and Carpocrates, have introduced promiscuous intercourse and a plurality of wives, and are indifferent about eating meats sacrificed to idols, maintaining that God does not greatly regard such matters. But why continue? For it is an impractical attempt to mention all those who, in one way or another, have fallen away from the truth. Chapter 29 Doctrines of various other Gnostic sects, and especially of the Barbeliotes, or Borborians. 1. Besides those, however, among these heretics who are Simonians, and of whom we have already spoken, a multitude of Gnostics have sprung up, and have been manifested like mushrooms growing out of the ground. I now proceed to describe the principal opinions held by them. Some of them, then, set forth a certain ion who never grows old, and exists in a virgin spirit. Him they style Barbelos. They declare that somewhere or other there exists a certain father who cannot be named, and that he was desirous to reveal himself to this Barbelos. Then this Enoya went forward, stood before his face, and demanded from him prognosis or prescience. But when prognosis had come forth, these two asked for aphtharsia, or incorruption, which also came forth, and after that, zoe ionios, or eternal life. Barbelos, glorifying in these, and contemplating their greatness, and in conception thus formed, rejoicing in this greatness, generated light similar to it. They declare that this was the beginning both of light and of the generation of all things, and that the Father, beholding this light, anointed it with his own benignity, that it might be rendered perfect. Moreover, they maintain that this was Christ, who again, according to them, requested that Nous should be given him as an assistant, and Nous came forth accordingly. Besides these, the father sent forth Logos. The conjunctions of Enoia and Logos, and of Aphtharsia and Christ, will thus be formed, while Zoe Ionios was united to Thelema, and Naus to Prognosis. These, then, magnified the great light and Barbelos. 2. They also affirm that Autogenes was afterwards sent forth from Enoia and Logos, to be a representation of the great light, and that he was greatly honored, all things being rendered subject unto him. Along with him was sent forth Aletheia, and a conjunction was formed between Autogenes and Aletheia. But they declare that from the light, which is Christ, and from Aphtharsia, four luminaries were sent forth to surround Autogenes. And again, from Thelema and Zoe Ionios, four other emissions took place, to wait upon these four luminaries, and these they name Charis, or Grace, Thelesis, or Will, Synesis, or Understanding, and Phronesis, or Prudence. Of these, Charis is connected with the great and first luminary, him they represent as Soter, or Savior, and style Autogenes. Thelesis, again, is united to the second luminary, whom they also name Raguel, Synesis to the third, whom they call David, and Phronesis to the fourth, whom they name Eleleth. 3. All these, then, being thus settled, Autogenes, moreover, produces a perfect and true man whom they also call Adamus, 
inasmuch as neither has he himself ever been conquered, nor have those from whom he sprang, he also was, along with the first light, severed from Armogenes. Moreover, perfect knowledge was sent forth by Autogenes, along with man, and was united to him. Hence, he attained to the knowledge of him that is above all. Invincible power was also conferred on him by the virgin spirit, and all things then rested in him, to sing praises to the great Ion. Hence, also they declare were manifested the mother, the father, and the son, while from Anthropos and Gnosis that tree was produced which they also style Gnosis itself. 4. Next they maintain that from the first angel who stands by the side of Monogenes, the Holy Spirit has been sent forth, whom they also term Sophia and Prunicus. He then, perceiving that all the others had consorts, while he himself was destitute of one, searched after a being to whom he might be united, and not finding one, he exerted and extended himself to the uttermost, and looked down into the lower regions, in the expectation of their finding a consort, and still not meeting with one, he leaped forth from his place in a state of great impatience, which had come upon him, because he had made his attempt without the good will of his father. Afterwards, under the influence of simplicity and kindness, he produced a work in which were to be found ignorance and audacity. This work of his they declare to be Protarchontus, the former of this lower creation. But they relate that a mighty power carried him away from his mother, and that he settled far away from her in the lower regions, and formed the firmament of heaven, in which also they affirm that he dwells. And in his ignorance he formed those powers which are inferior to himself, angels and firmaments, and all things earthly. They affirm that he, being united to Althadia, or audacity, produced Cacia, or wickedness, Zelos, or emulation, Phthonos, or envy, Erinais, or fury, and Epithymia, or lust. When these were generated, the mother Sophia deeply grieved, fled away, departed into the upper regions, and became the last of the Ogdoad, reckoning it downwards. On her thus departing, he imagined he was the only being in existence, and on this account declared, I am a jealous God, and besides me there is no one. Such are the falsehoods which these people invent. End of Book 1, Chapters 26-29